Okay, go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome to a very special, very special meeting of Miami Township Board of Trustees. Um, it's our first meeting in May. We have three trustees, Chris Officer, um, Fire Chief, Road Administrator, um, special guests. And we're going to start normal meeting because we're waiting for a few more special guests uh, to arrive. So with that said, I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of the meeting of April 15th, 2019. I'll second it. The motion and the second. Is there any uh, discussion regarding those minutes? There was one letter that was changed. <laughs> one letter. I, I did that on purpose to see if you'd find it. I found it. <laughs> uh, hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills in the amount of $34,850.46, broken down general funds $4,270.63, fire fund $14,995.22, Cemetery Fund $2,679.84, EMS Billing $7,613.71, Road and Bridge $4,931.81, and Capital Project Fund $2,679.84. That was for advertising. I would move that we approve those bills. Motion is second. There's a second. Any further discussion regarding the of those? Hearing none, can we go, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Uh, first correspondence uh, for this period. Uh, one, regarding the flow testing for the new firehouse location, which we need to talk about uh, later. Statement from Ohio Department of Commerce, registration of cemeteries. And uh, I sent the one in for Glenn Forest. Did you send the one in for Clinton? Not yet. Got that, plenty, of, plenty of time, but yeah. Okay. All right. Got one. Um, mobile emails from uh, MSA Architects regarding the 424 meeting minutes uh, and the amendment to the contract with USDA cost-saving items from uh, App Architecture submission of applications to subcontractors. Uh, not really subcontractors. That was for the uh, construction managers. Uh, email about a new bucket for Bobcat, which we need to talk about in the, in the road department. Uh, road closure announcement with the Green County Engineer, we can talk about that in the road uh, department. A uh, letter from Attorney Laura Curlis regarding agrarian, we can talk about that in zoning. Uh, email uh, about uh, State Route 343, and we can talk about that in road. Uh, May 14th Township Association meeting announcement. Um, we're going. Uh, <laughs> The annual Grinnell Mill Foundation uh, April 28th meeting minutes. We can talk about that in new business. Uh, Township Zone Commission March meeting minutes. MSA, WDC, USDA, Miami Township April 24th and May 1st uh, meeting minutes. Ohio Township Associations April 26th and May 3rd legislative alerts. Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission Executive Committee April 16th meeting announcement. Email from MBRPC regarding the Track uh, 2019 program. Um, Miami Township Fire Rescue April Activity Report from Bath Town for Bath Township. Uh, email regarding legal services proposed, a legal service proposal, a proposal for the Yellow Springs Dedicated Community Development Corporation, YSDCDC. It's easier if you don't put an I in there. Ripper and Eckler's newsletter. Update on the Vectrum project. I'll get a news look outside to see all the green lines on the street. Uh, Howe Township Association newsletter, grass and clippings, fund status, revenue status, and preparation status for uh, May 6, 2018. Is there any other correspondence in or out? Are they here? Someone just, oh, I hear a fire truck. Something's, something came. You can choose however you want to proceed. I'll uh, start just giving you your fire department report and they should be here in a second. All right. Uh, so since the last board meeting, wait for it, 
We had 58 EMS calls. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And 19 fire calls and eight fire inspections. Um, last month, you had the report, we, uh, we had nine calls in Bath Township, so we're now what the average is, so that's good. It seems like in April, though, every call in Bath Township was in the farthest point away from us. Trayvon in 235, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So. But we got them, so that's good. Uh, Yellow Springs Kids Playhouse has a new mobile stage unit that they're going to be having. Really? Uh, and I was, Jonathan, uh, John Fleming asked me if, as for an advertisement, they were, if they were interested in parking it on our current vacant lot uh, for like a month over the summer. I told them that was, was above my pay grade, so I had to ask you guys. I mean, I think I'd be there with like a big banner saying, you know, it's Playhouse. Sounds like a fire station. That's <laughs> something. <laughs> but I, I hate to confuse the public into thinking that we're, building a, we're yeah. doing something other than what they asked about <laughs> and, and we'll be committed to for the next 30 years. Did um, you put in small print? Not a fire station? <laughs> How about if we uh, mull this over and up in two weeks? Can we mull this over? I will, when I see John, I will tell him it's being mulled. It sounds, say, so it I just sounds good to me. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it's going to be plugged in. Or where, where are they going to have it? Do performances? They're not going to do any performances there. I, they just wanted, I don't know what. I don't know all the details about it. Do you think you park it where they're going to use it? Yeah, I think it's more of an advertisement. Because they've got a show coming up over the summer. Uh, yeah. I think that's what he's after. I don't have any immediate objection. I just, first I heard of it, I'd like to go slow. Just want to mold. Mm -hmm. I like that word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we are with Cedar, not Cedar, with um, Union Township, Spring Valley, and New Jasper Township. We are transitioning tomorrow, hopefully smoothly and seamlessly, from our current VHF paging system for calls, which we are still using for old school, to doing the paging over the marks. Which will make it easier for our guys to actually hear the calls because it's very scratchy on some page because it's coming over two different frequencies. I don't think ever, everyone has marks. Everyone in the county has is on marks, but not everyone is making this switch um, because not everybody. Yeah, I'm not because of our numbers of volunteers. We only have seven guys in town who need a pager, so their radios are being reprogrammed to function as pagers. So they were done today, and then we bought to get the bill executed. Nice there's a box that's out there in the radio room that will alert the station mm -hmm. uh, when a call comes in, which will actually be nicer than what we have right now. So, um, so according, you know, if everything goes according to plan, tomorrow everything will work out well. Starting at 10 a.m., we'll start testing. Um, I'm off tomorrow, so <laughs> choose that. I chose that one well, so uh, it's Danny's problem. <laughs> um, which is actually probably better since he actually understands the technical side of things, but I'd just be like a drooling at this little if they ask me. Did that work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and then I think they should all be here. I'll double check this. Then I, the only other thing I had is to request an executive session. But where's Joe? I see Joe. So we've got Joe. All right, Richard, you have to play Joe now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> me. Ryan, Ryan Casey. and little Casey. Yeah, get him in here. Especially Casey. He's not in the trouble. <laughs> Uh, the tanker is fully in service, the Bath Township tanker, and it's been, uh, still, I mean, it still says Bath Township, obviously, but it has our logos on it, so I think it looks pretty nice. It hasn't gone anywhere yet, but, <laughs> but well, I didn't, I didn't well, put Riverside your account letter in, in there, or, I don't know, I think it has some in there, I don't know, I'm looking at for you, I don't have to even look at it, do you look at it? Yeah. I do, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, the place we take it to used to be in Beaver Creek, and this gentleman ran his business out of his house. And he's been striking our trucks for years because his prices are great, but I think he's done some stuff. Yeah, but it was weird because you, if you didn't know what you were looking for. It was just a garage in the back of this house. He had a sign like that big. Mm. Uh, he couldn't fit any trucks inside his garage, only a cruiser or something. But 
But now he's got a nice permanent place on in Riverside on Stanford Street. Big garage, you can pull a fire truck inside. And don't have to worry about the wheels getting stolen. Double the prices. No, no, that's what I've, I mean. That whole tanker to do what we did to it was three hundred and fifty bucks. In the world of Scotch Lake, it's very cheap. Do you know if we had a, a date set for Carson for the test? I don't know. Dennis been handling that. Oh, you're lined up here. So I don't. I, I don't know. Sure. Okay. Good for this again. Yeah. I know they were Whatever. Phone tag. Um, we talked to the rep. They were going to do it while they're doing the colleges. Colleges. Okay. So probably the same. I'll check with them tonight. All right. Everybody do it. Can everybody go on one side of the room with the other who's going to be honored? Are you guys no, supposed to be? They're just okay, they're just okay. I mean, they're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangers on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's my photographer. I've asked him to do Oh, good. Good. All right. Well, you're probably wondering why we called you all here tonight. It's an intervention, actually. <laughs> Dan, sorry. It's the Dr. Pepper. Um, so we're here um, to honor one of our crews uh, from uh, a call that happened on March 17th, uh, early hours on March 17th. Um, all these gentlemen uh, responded to, you know, Casey Brewer, firefighter EMT Ryan Evans, firefighter paramedic Joe Panuto, who are you? Firefighter Ryan Schroeder, <laughs> firefighter EMT Nick Miller Jacobson, and of course, TJ. Firefighter EMR TJ Fre Freeze. Right. It's different every time. <laughs> Whoever he is, they all did a wonderful job. They responded to a report of chest pains uh, at a Cornerstone Trail address in Bath Township. Um, arriving on the scene within nine minutes, which for anyone in the world at 3.30 in the morning is a pretty good time. Um, <laughs> Eight minute drive. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was uh, quickly apparent that uh, from when they assessed the patient that this gentleman was in pretty significantly serious distress. Uh, as they went to load him into the ambulance, he became unresponsive, which is something we definitely frown upon. Um, immediately recognizing the gravity of the situation, they began resuscitation uh, with themselves, using medications, and of course the Lucas CPR device, uh, and then rapidly transported to Soin. While en route to Soin, the gentleman regained consciousness, which for those of you who don't operate in emergency medical services is not typically what happens, unfortunately. Um, they teach us, you know, as CPR instructors, Joe and I are both CPR instructors, and, and they teach us that, uh, what is it, 4 or 5% maybe pre-hospital arrests actually survive. Uh, and luckily for this gentleman and his family, he's not one of those statistics. Um, he, and, uh, Christy's going to talk about the, the hospital treatment, but we transported him to Soin, where he was handed off to the crew at Soin. Yeah. So I am Christy Bradford, I'm the EMS coordinator for Soin and Green. Um, so on behalf of Soin, when uh, these gentlemen brought their patient to us at Soin, the patient was found to have an acute anterior STEMI, which is basically a heart attack. They took him for an emergency cat, which he was found to have 100% occlusion of his LAD, which is a significant um, artery for the heart. Um, they were able to extubate him later on that day, um, and he was fully coherent talking and was discharged three, three days later with no deficits. So um, the reason why I had them come out here is one of the things that Kettering has started to do is we have started to do these challenge queen ceremonies. And um, to give you a little bit of history about the challenge queen, and forgive me, it's a little long, but to give you the understanding of what it is. Um, so the challenge queen tradition dates back to World War I. And as the U.S. started building up its Army Air Service, men volunteered to serve. One of those men was a wealthy lieutenant who wanted to give each member of his unit a memento. So he ordered several coin-sized bronze medallions to be made. The lieutenant put his own medallion in a small leather pouch that he wore around his neck. A short time later, his plane was shot down over Germany. He survived, but was captured by German patrol who took his identifi identifiable items, leaving him with no way to identify himself if he escaped. However, what they didn't take was a small pouch with a medallion. The lieutenant was taken to a small town near the front lines of the war. He managed to find some civilian clothing and escaped, eventually stumbling, uh, stumbling into a French outpost. Wary of anyone not in uniform, the French soldiers did not recognize him, his ascent and immediately assumed he was an enemy. They initially planned to execute him since they couldn't identify him. But the lieutenant, remembering he still had a small pouch around his neck, pulled out the coin to show the soldiers 
his unit's insignia. One of the Frenchmen recognized that insignia, and he was spared. When he finally made it back to his squadron, it became tradition for all service members to carry a unit coin at all times. So custom challenge coins are a time-honored means of honoring law enforcement, firefighters, and emergency medical service providers who continually risk their lives for the safety of others. Law enforcement, firefighters, and EMS organizations have followed military suit by distributing challenge coins to their staff for recognizing and achieve achievement purposes. Many have recognized that a small personal token can build unity among a team, which can also boost morale. So why are we honoring these providers with challenge coins? To honor emergency responders who have provided exceptional patient care, Kettering Health Network has adopted this time-honored tradition of presenting this challenge coin for care that has gone above and beyond. So in this situation, we definitely feel that this crew has went above and beyond for this patient, and therefore um, we would like to represent them with the challenge coin from Kettering Health Network. So. There's a few cameras here. There's a few, few phones here. <laughs> Basically, it's something that goes into their personnel file. It sticks with them. It's kind of like the permanent file from your high school, um, which I have all of yours, by the way. Uh, they'll also receive accommodation bars that they can wear with their uniforms. Um, and the accommodation talks about the incident, which I just kind of did. But basically, it says, you all reacted quickly and professionally to this incident, working as a team to immediately start resuscitation. You remain calm throughout the incident and focus completely on the patient. Your calm, professional demeanors throughout the incident not only saved the patient, but helped to calm and reassure his family. The teamwork you displayed was outstanding. Because of your actions, this patient is alive today. So on behalf of the department and the township, I would like to officially commend each of you for your efforts, and thank you for all the hard work that you guys do, and you will hopefully continue to do. <laughs> Jason, congratulations. It just it's a it's a feather in your cap and, and we're just as proud of you as as anybody in this room. So we wanted to, to come and, and say thank you in person and great job guys. Quite impressive. Thank you for taking care of us. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who made the long journey in this <laughs> afternoon? Uh, You gonna pause it for a second? Thank you, Chrissy. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, so we'll finish up the fire department report. And the only other thing I have here. You have to have a chance to look through the account. Uh, I have not. Yeah. I just the only one that 
I wanted to ask you about the only stat was the net revenues per run uh, in 18 was 272 of 9 and 19. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for coming, Steve. All right. See you guys. It was 289.51. Um, in, in your experience, are those average or those good numbers? Uh, yeah, they're, they are good numbers. From what Heath, uh, our sales, I guess let's say, account rep, mm -hmm. told us um, consistently since they've taken on, uh, since we've taken them on as a building agency, uh, we have one of the highest return rates of any mm -hmm. customer they have um, in terms of the amount of people who actually pay or insurance companies who pay. Mm -hmm. uh, our collection rate's up around 80%, uh, which is pretty much unheard of. The, the fluctuations in amount per call uh, primarily has to do with national trends in terms of Affordable Care Act, which is still affecting things, um, the reimbursements that Medicare and Medicaid set, um, and then other insurance companies will look at that, and they're not paying as much as they used to, basically, for the insurance mm -hmm. Um, they're actually paying closer to what our expenses are. Like any other medical provider, we bill mm -hmm. typically a, a higher amount, just expecting that the price will be negotiated down to, to that. So he said that's what explains it. I mean, our patients are still, their companies are still, I mean, we still have the highest number of insured patients that they have. Um, in any community, they, they serve something like 90 or 100 communities. Mm -hmm. um, but revenue drops just because primarily. Last year we also had more non-removals, and we don't know for those. So um, that explains some of that. Yeah, your 2019 numbers is like 88 percent. Yeah, almost 8 to 9. Yeah, 8. 8. 7. And I mean, I can think. I mean, I, maybe on one hand, since we started with them, what in 2008, I think it was. Yeah. The number of complaints that you know we've received. And typically, it's just a, an issue of you know, the person can't find the phone number, mm -hmm. or they, they call us instead of calling Medi-Cal. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, everyone I, I've talked to as a patient, they, they're happy with the service. They get their call their number and then it kind of helps them out quite a bit. And it's actually really easy. We had a call recently. Um, that was actually last year, but the bill came this year. And uh, they're a township residence out on Fishwell Road, and they received a bill for the copay, mm -hmm. which they're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And it was a simple error when one of the guys was putting the report in. He hit the wrong box for not a resident versus a resident. Mm -hmm. One phone call, and they took care of it, and sent her a uh, uh, zero balance fee. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it seems pretty easy when there's a problem. So, um, they've done a pretty good job, I think. Good. All right, anything else for the fire department? Uh, just an executive session for matters of personnel okay. and, uh, discipline, promotion, termination, that whole metro area. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that comes out. <laughs> Well, now you can't just say man as a person anymore. <laughs> right. Well, you threw everything. Okay. All right, we're back in executive session at uh, 5.38. Uh, no direct action as a result of the uh, work uh, in the session. Um, so we'll continue on with the fire. Uh, a couple quick things. Um, how's our annual report doing? Uh, it's actually almost done, believe it or not. I had a burst of creativity. All right. Um, <laughs> creativity, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's an opening, it's, it's always a tough one, though. That, that letter, you uh -huh. know, it's always a hard one for me. Uh, the charts are easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> charts and pictures are easy, but writing about uh, how it's helping out. So. Okay. Um, looking forward to it. And Tom's looking forward to having it on the website. And I'm interested in any. You said you were just going to take a copy of somebody else did with comparison of our pay rates. Yes, I'm just waiting still to get that from my little reminder. Remind them that I still need that. You had said a couple of, a while ago, I thought now, uh, that you were working on not restructuring your officers, uh, but filling actually, some... Actually pieces. adding some. <laughs> yeah, currently we only have one line supervisor, which is... Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> So we started a testing process. Um, we had six candidates mm -hmm. um, uh, who they've all completed the first phase, which is a written test. Mm -hmm. um, and they will move on to uh, a tabletop assessment that assesses their tactical capabilities and knowledge for firefighting and EMS, actually. 
Um, and then the final phase is interviews. Mm -hmm. And what we've historically done with the interviews is there's two sets of interviews that go through. One is with Kenny and I, and then usually another chief for the department. Um, in the past, we had Chief Riley from um, Fair one, but he's no longer there. So we'll find someone else. But <laughs> uh, and then the other officers do an interview. So um, Nate, <laughs> and then we're gonna we have another um, uh, guy from Belbert who's gonna help with that process as well. So we have there who's done fire classes with us. I mean, he's familiar with how to operate. So um, we were supposed to convene that tomorrow night. We're gonna push it back just probably a week or two. Um, we have an availability issue with some of the outsiders who are gonna assist us. Um, but the goal is to have everyone in place. We're tentatively planning for June 10th, Monday, June 10th, which is the opposite of the trust day, to have a, a swearing in ceremony for the supervisor and you know, catch up all the members who have to take them to walk the ship, which may be half the fun at this point. So, at least it's Casey Brook. So, um, so, yeah, we'll put that down. Let's do that. Anything else for fire? Oh, the only other thing to tell you guys too is we're switching our current mobile phone service is with Sprint. It's been mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. um, we're switching from Sprint probably at the end of this month to AT&T. Uh, AT&T FirstNet, which is a dedicated network that AT&T built under a federal contract for first responders. Um, basically, I mean, it's the same network, but it gives us priorities so an emergency when everyone is calling and free to make sure she's okay. And you can't get through, we get priority and can still talk to people. Um, plus, it's like 45 to 55% cheaper. Really? Um, yeah. It's already really cheap for you guys. Yeah, Sprint's really cheap. Um, the downside to Sprint, I mean, they've always had great customer service with us, and the prices have always been great. The downside to Sprint is that um, the network is uh, not great. Um, for instance, this morning, I was getting all these text messages while I was in Clifton from guys about schedule stuff, and I was in roaming one X with one bar, which I don't know what that means, except that I couldn't answer anything. So I had to leave Clifton, drive back to Yellow Springs yeah. to answer these and go back to Clifton. Uh, at and I mean, Clifton's still kind of cold, but uh, at and a lot of the guys have the service. And it's, and it's a nice thing for our volunteers because family members can then hop on uh, and have the same savings and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so there's a sprint rep. Uh, at and rep will be here at the end of the month to talk to you guys about that too. But we will add, um, Replace the mobile phones we have and the modems that are in the web uh, And then there's a wireless hotspot involved in both ambulances. I don't exactly understand all that stuff, but Danny and Jeremy tell me that. They just told me that's what we did. So. <laughs> but I nodded and agreed. So, anyway, so in case you start seeing an ATT bill, or you yeah. will start seeing an ATT bill, where's the spread? All right, anything else? New firehouse report. Um, let's see, we've been fairly active uh, since our last meeting. We had a special township meeting on the 24th of April uh, with representatives from uh, MSA, USDA, WDC, all the abbreviations. Uh, we had a, a long afternoon, I think it ran three, three and a half hours for the meeting. Um, it generated a lot of ideas uh, how to uh, save costs on the building to make it competitive enough so we can afford to build it and uh, still maintain the uh, the character and the the, uh, the look of the building that uh, the township has known to come at the love <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> so that's being worked on right now, um, the engineering, re-engineering some of these electrical systems, some of these HVAC systems, some of the structural systems, uh, a little bit of everything got, got thrown into that pot. And we're tentatively scheduled to meet somewhere around the 15th. Again, have another special meeting. Margaret, remind us we have to adopt the, uh, yeah, adopt the minutes of the last special meeting that we didn't do today. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to do that. Now, yeah, in the sense. <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's wait. wait yeah. to the next one. Oh, next meeting? Next meeting. Okay. Because yeah. it's not on the agenda, so we would have a hard time being official. So, that's being worked on now, and 
during that meeting, um, we anticipate a list of um, uh, changes that would will be possible and the uh, resulting prices of what it would cost and I guess what it would save us and we'll mix them all together and see if it comes up with the roughly $300,000 that we need to uh, uh, slice off the uh, last uh, last low bid for the, for the project and then we'll start, um, WTC will start, or somebody will start writing bid packages <laughs> For all the different components, because remember we're going to have we're going to have multiple bids on these now, so we could have we could have ten or twelve actual bids go out depending on how they break it down. Um, so, and still looking for a um, late August, early September groundbreaking ceremonial groundbreaking for uh, the public. Uh, got big plans for that. Yeah. All right, anything else from anyone regarding the new firehouse? Other than the flow test that I don't know about. Hearing none, we'll move to the Cemetery Road. Cemetery. Sexton, Belkin House. Present. Okay. We have had uh, <laughs> three burials since the last meeting. Two of them were in Clifton, there were four burials. We had an ashes who got here Saturday. Um, going to portion basis in the next few days, I think this week, first of the week is gone. And some graves. You got some grass to grow in three weeks. I know, well, I can do what I can. I mean, we talked them once, but the range is, but we're on it. Later. How many bases do you have? Six in Clifton and one down here, Jimmy Corky. Six, wow. Uh -huh. We'll get them. Well, actually, one was left in the fall for the season. It didn't until after the fall. Have you given me paperwork on those barrels? Have I already done them? Yeah. No? Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay. And what else was that? That's about all I had. I did the scattering list that we already did. So that's what we're doing. Mowing bases. So we're going to have to weed eat. Uh, after next. Yeah. It's Memorial Day before you know it. We wanted to do it for Mother's Day, but it's just kind of what happens. Because the rain tells us up and grass is growing like <laughs> So there's a local excavator that tells me that you and he talked about flattening out the, the, the cemetery and that. He said, you had so much time on your hands that you'd be able to do it, no problem at all. I knew he would say that. <laughs> That's what he said. I said, no. <laughs> We'd like to, you know, practice or meet the new machine. Oh, no, fine. Uh -huh. He said he'd bring these little boulders or any level or off. I would just like to keep a little bit of a dirt pile. He said he could do that. I didn't know what he was going to tell me. a great big dirt pile behind the garage. It's gone. Is oh, at the shop? Yeah. That's clay. That's not possible. That's good. Have you dug into that at all? Do you, do you know what's in there? I mean, how much how much junk is in there? At the cemetery? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got a lot of ruby in it. It's good for the to drop off with. But not cement blocks and No, there, there's a pile over there. It's got some junk in it. The one pile over here, which I don't think that's enough. There, are, there is some bust of a block or something, up, kind of up in the corner, mm -hmm. you know, over towards the north side. I think there's an orange cone that's sitting up there, yeah, kind of close to that, it's in that area. Yeah, and then there's one willow tree, you don't want to leave it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I wonder where that was. That's it. Anything else for the cemetery? Joe, I'm Richard. Was this at the No, I, I uh, have my body going to the right thing. No. Shut up. <laughs> go to Rhodes? Let's go to Rhodes. Okay, milling on Jacoby is done. Thanks that up today. Oh, yeah? Uh, How did it work? Good. Milling? Yeah, the humps. Have you driven over there? Speed bumps. 
Did you get to Branham or not? I got Branham too. Oh, did you? Yeah. Jacoby and Branham were old highways. Old 68. concrete underneath the asphalt. The uh, concrete slabs move. And they we bumps just, at the intersections. Just cut the tops off. Just, mm -hmm. And we're going to wedge some on Jacoby anyway, so we'll straighten it up. But it's a lot better. Yeah. Check it out. Okay. Uh, new buckets here. Well, I want to know why it doesn't have a cloth. It does have a cloth. It opens. Did you look at it? Yeah. yeah. It opens. It doesn't have any teeth. It's supposed to have teeth on the front end, but it's not. It's an old bucket. Hmm? It's an old bucket. Oh, old bucket that needs that kitchen man to look off the name. <laughs> yeah, it opens. It's a combo bucket. Okay. What do you think we were getting? Like a graphic? Yeah. No. Just a bucket like we had. Grab stuff is that what the old one is that's against the wall? That's a blade. Oh, no, that's our straight bucket. That's the straight bucket that came with some rock, yeah. Oh. But we need more we can grab walls and rocks. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. okay. It was supposed to have cut the cut teeth on the front, but it doesn't. I don't have to get some shell Do they bolt on? Yeah. So sometimes I don't need my way, but it's nice to have them. Mm -hmm. That's about it. We're going to try to start some ditches next week. That's going to be done now before we get to the next this week. Your mm -hmm. yeah. mm. trees and debris and mostly all cleaned up? No, I've got some trees on there. Uh, we're now circle we're cleaning up. Yeah. There was one on high that was going to clean up, but somebody could keep it to it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We got all the other stuff. You don't bring it back? No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything else for the road? From Mr. Potterball. Yeah. We still have a few of those. Did you guys see Roadwise that Kennedy's doing bridge work on? Grinnell? The Grinnell Road Bridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, they are? It's going to be closed for approximately two weeks. Two weeks, but during the daytime is what the note we got from oh. the engineer. What are they doing? I don't know, it just said, it. yeah, it said they're doing work to that bridge. It's mill? Yeah, bridge. yeah, and it'll be closed like 7.30 to 3.30. Oh, and the kitchen the park. So I, I was doing their working hours. The deck work or something. Because the bridge itself. It's not that old. It's not that old. Yeah. No, and then that amount of time, they're not doing something major to the bridge. Right, so, but I put a cover bridge in, so. <laughs> yeah. It's the bomb guy or honorary. Covered bridge. <laughs> I think those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> Daytime. Yeah, days. it's. Let me go get the dates for you. Sure. It starts, it starts next week, I think, or maybe the week after. There's a memo in the office. No, I don't need it right now. Yeah. All right. Thank you. This is Bob, sir. Um. I don't really have anything to report except the, that um, the state auditors will be in the office tomorrow morning at 8 32 out of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Financials. So I'm going to get ready for that. For that doesn't have to do with the township. I mean, you know, this stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to report. Anything to report. No, no amendments to any permanent appropriations for us. But I will be looking into the burning question. Deeper. And and, and uh, chairperson Mutra's mind. Yes. Thank you. Zoning inspector. Um, a couple of permits since I last saw you. The Boy Scouts are adding a new bank of bathrooms by the swimming pool, and um, David and Sharon Newhart are building an attached garage to their house. The oh. zoning commission uh, met just just after your last meeting, and Don attended that meeting and and gave them some some of his perspective on what's the value of of having residential PUDs and you know, took in that information um, and. I uh, 
Got a response via Laura Curlis from Agraria about their use of the property, which I've only just looked it over. I haven't gone through it in detail, but it sort of starts out saying, yes, this is the law, and we're following the law, and then at the end says, and the community sort of approves of doing this, that, and the other thing. At the end, it's like, oh. <laughs> so anyway, I have to spend a little more time with it and, and, and see what things are, you know, within the zoning regulations and, and what things may be a little bit beyond the pale. I, I'd like to, to say, in this, in this public arena, that traditionally, at least as long as I've been the zoning administrator and worked with, with the trustees, we don't take every rule and enforce it to the letter. But we try to work with the spirit mm -hmm. of the code and of the state that tells us what we can do and, and, the, and the community's interests. And, and that's, that's a juggling act to decide you know, when that balance is appropriate or when, no, if, if what you want to do is this far beyond the code, then we need to look at changing the code, right. not somehow making an exception. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what we're looking at, I think, here in, in this situation is how much room is there to wiggle and, and, and when is it, you know, beyond what the community has said in terms of the comprehensive plan for Miami Township and the community has said in terms of our zoning bill. They're all public documents. <clears throat> so anyway, well, I'll be, as I say, reading that letter very carefully and crafting the response. And that's all I have for this evening. Okay, thank you. Anything from Richard? Did you want to say anything about your meeting with the Zoning Commission? Uh, I was impressed by the Zoning Commission. Good. It was cordial and uh, uh, they listened to me. Well, that's half the battle. <laughs> or maybe more. Well, they're pretty good at listening. Mark, you anything to bring up? Um, new business. New business. There was something you said you were going to bring up from the communication to the new business. Yeah, I just was just thinking about that. New correspondence. Oh, well, there was one thing that I, I did want to bring up. Well, I'll look down, but we received a uh, notification from the state of Ohio, Ohio Department of Transportation, that they are going to uh, revisit State Route 343's paving uh, oh, quality. <laughs> oh, they're, they're not quite satisfied with what they, they had done? Yeah. I, I, I pointed out to the District 8 representative that it seemed to be failing on a very rapid basis. And, uh, and he went out and inspected it, and, and we talked, and he gave me the typical bureaucrat, well, yeah, and, you know, but it was, there were heavy loads on there from construction and this, that, and the other thing. He says, well, and we'll monitor it. Well, I'll give him credit. He, he turned it over to the district engineer, supervisor, paving guru, whoever she is. And she came out and looked at it and decided that it did, in fact, need to have uh, worked on to it. Probably won't be till next year, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know if they'll try and... I know there's that there's that section on the hill which is really pretty much which is pretty beat up down to the, mm -hmm. the old surface. I don't think it, Dan and I have talked about it in terms of township roads. I think all of us have observed within the village and now we look at people in the creek. Sometimes just pavement is not going to solve the problem. This is a rush. No matter how well you put down the asphalt. There's a rush that a year early. Yeah. When they paved it, there's a rush job. But, you know, if, if, the, if the base isn't in good condition, all the paving in the world won't solve it. So, I'm happy to report that that's going to be addressed at some point. Um, the only thing, the other thing on here that I noticed was uh, really under old business, which is the continuing work on 
uh, formation, the forma formation of the Yellow Springs Dedicated Community Development Commission. Corporation. It was a C something. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, what's the DCDC then? Dayton Contemporary Dance Company? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, Chris De Owen. <laughs> dedicated Community Development Corporation. Development CDDC. No. DC. Dedicated Community oh, de de Development Corporation. DCDC. Oh, okay. Development Corporation. Okay. Development Corporation. Oh, so it is DC. Oh, is that what the letter you changed in my mouth? Because uh -huh. I put an I in there? Yes. Because you kept saying, didn't you keep saying that? That was an I. Well, yeah, I got all these thrown in there. <laughs> like improvement. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what made the letter say. It doesn't matter. Green County asked that we did not call it a CIC oh. because Green County has a CIC and they felt that might reduce their ability to get state funding if there were more CICs in one county than uh, necessary. Well, it will be a CIC, but just not called. But it will be called <laughs> a CDC. <laughs> Doing okay. business as. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we met today, and uh, uh, we uh, um, approved contracting with a law firm in Dayton to review the uh, bylaws and constitution that has been drafted and approved by the committee, anyway, in a draft form and to begin uh, application for um, 501c3 status from the uh, IRS, uh, which involves a zillion submissions of paperwork. And I suppose you know, remember how much they're charging? Well, it's going to be by the hours, 175 an hour, which is quite reasonable in, in uh, legal expenses, for, especially for townships. Um, It's going to run somewhere in the 2,000-ish range, 2,500, to to do the, the bylaw work and and the and the nonprofit uh, application. And I'd say that's a really good price. Yeah, extremely good price. Really good. Well, when I did the Cornell Mill one, it was I, I didn't use a lawyer. I used a, a, a commercial foundation, nonprofit foundation business, and we paid fifteen hundred dollars. This was. 2004, we paid $1,500, um, and basically what we got was we got all the forms that had to be filled out, which there were just like 60 pages of answers that you had to give about your organization and everything. And then you send it back to them, they review it, they say, well, this is a good answer, this is not a good answer, we suggest this, we suggest that, and that thing, and, and that's done, and then it gets sent into the IRS. And you you're waiting and you cross your fingers. Um, so there's more involved, there's more involved here than, than we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do. <coughs> so that's that's progress. Uh, one nice thing about the way that system works is once the basic paperwork is, is put together and filed and you've made yourself a corporation with the state of Ohio and then you uh, get an EIN and everything. It can start operating as a nonprofit DCIC, D, DCDC, you know, DC, DC, uh, <laughs> without actually having been awarded the status from the IRS. Because the IRS generally takes six to nine months to turn that around. And so oh, so you don't have to find a, a separate substitute organization to right. nurture you. You can start on you, your you own. Can, you can start. As soon as you have an EIN, then you can, uh, you can get a checking account and start. Receiving, uh, receiving donations. Okay, so that's that's my old business. But any, any other old business today? Hearing none, I will then entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. I'll see you. Move in second. <laughs> it's official. Thank you, everyone. Oh, everyone left. <laughs> And what happened? We, we <laughs> got that wrapped. <laughs>